Zinedine Zidane was a maestro on the football pitch. A man who moved with such elegance and grace that they made a 90 minute film of him just floating around the football pitch. He would glide across the grass, pick out passes that others might not even see, score beautiful goals and drift past defenders on the ball like they didn't exist. But beyond the poetry, Zidane was a man for big moments. He was a big, powerful midfielder who would win loose balls, drive into space and meet corners with tiring headers or meet the ball with some of the most ferocious of strikes. Such a potent mix of style and substance made Zinedine Zidane one of the best players of his generation and one of football's all-time cult heroes. They say that there's a fine line between genius and madness too. Well, the 2006 World Cup final would suggest so. Zizou was infamously sent off in the World Cup final against Italy. What was meant to be a beautiful last dance turned into a nightmare. The polar opposite of the 1998 World Cup final when he propelled France to victory over Brazil in Paris. Zinedine Yazid Zidane, now a name synonymous with elegant skill and footballing artistry that few can match, was born on June 23rd, 1972, in Marseille. Like many from the city and in France, his parents had come from North Africa. They had immigrated to Paris from the north of Algeria in 1953, before the start of the Algerian War. The family, which had settled in the city's tough northern districts of Barbet and Saint-Denis, found little work in the region and in the mid-1960s moved to the northern Marseille suburb of Le Castellan, where Zizou was brought up and honed his skills playing football on the streets. I have an affinity with the Arabic world. I have it in my blood via my parents. I'm very proud of being French, but also very proud of having these roots and this diversity, said Zidane. His footballing journey began in the youth ranks of AS Caen. There he would later make his professional debut in 1989. He'd been spotted by the club as a teenager whilst participating at a football center run by the French FA. At Caen, Zidane's coaches noticed that he was immature and still learning. He was easily won wound up by onlookers who insulted his race or family, as you would be of course, but his talent on the ball was also very obvious. Zidane helped Khan qualify for Europe in what was their best ever league finish, but his own personal career would take another big, big leap when he left the club for Bordeaux in 1992. There he would play with the great Christophe Dugarry in midfield and even make a UEFA Cup final appearance. His performances in the midfield showcased a unique blend of vision, dribble and precise passing. At this stage, it became clear that Zidane was one of the most exciting talents in European football and that he wasn't a midfielder with limited traits. Because of his skill, size and athleticism, he could very much do it all in the middle of the park and control an entire game. Zidane made a high profile move to Juventus in Italy then and became the world's most expensive player at the time. His time with Juve was nothing short of spectacular. Zidane led the team to two Serie A titles and back-to-back -back Champions League finals. However, unfortunately, Juve came up short on both occasions. Zidane did win the Intercontinental Cup in 1996 though, and he then earned the FIFA World Player of the Year award in 1998. A large part of this was down to more magic he was creating on the international scene. There is nothing in the pinnacle of any footballer's career that can come close to winning the World Cup for your country after scoring the crucial goals in the final, especially your country's first World Cup triumph hosted at home in Paris against the greatest international side ever, Brazil. A greater glory couldn't be written or dreamt of, but this was the reality for Zidane. It wasn't a Hollywood script. Zizou's brace in the 1998 final against Brazil sealed a 3-0 victory, etching his name in French football history. Zidane's elegance, vision, and ability to rise to the occasion made him the talisman of the French team and perhaps the biggest name in the sport at the time. Zidane had made the World Cup final his own, his stage, his night. And had he repeated the same type of victory in 2006, heaven only knows just where he would be seen in the ranking of the all-time greats today. Zidane's next chapter at club level unfolded at Real Madrid, where he moved in 2001 for another world record transfer fee. His impact was immediate as he helped Real Madrid secure the 2001-2002 UEFA Champions League title with a stunning volley in the final against Bayer Leverkusen. Zidane's performance 
performances in the white jersey earned him the FIFA World Player of the Year award for the third time in 2003. The 02-03 season saw Zidane guiding Real Madrid to a La Liga title, showcasing his enduring influence in the midfield. His ability to control the pace of the game and deliver magical moments endeared him to the Santiago Bernabeu faithful. He made the famous white kit with the number 5 on the back one of the most vivid images in football culture. As alluded to, the 2006 FIFA World Cup in Germany marked Zidane's international farewell. Despite entering the tournament with the cloud of impending retirement over his shoulders, Zidane delivered sublime performances and led France to another final. Yet in the end, the final would be remembered for an unfortunate incident where Zidane, in his last professional match, famously or infamously headbutted Marco Materazzi, receiving a red card. Zidane looked primed to make history with his golden Adidas Predators on. He even put France 1-0 up, but in the end the Italians would win on penalties and Zidane's career would end in tears. When all is said and done, however, Zidane is fondly remembered for the finals where he did score the winning goals, like that 98 World Cup final or the 2002 Champions League volley. Very, very few players have dictated the face of football history like Zidane, nor with such power or grace on the football. He will go down as one of the best ever. Let us know where he ranks for you in the all-time greats list in the comment section below.